Hold on. Pause that. Pause, cyberpunk. Hi, Zeos Pantera. In the great room. Uh, play Halo in here. Um, so, excuse the echo, but I'm setting up for a journey to Capital Audio Fest, which is down in Washington, D.C. Probably happen by the time this video comes out, unless I do some crazy adjustment of scheduling. Um, if you're in Capital Audio Fest, you're near D.C. and you're going to go to that, I actually have a room. I'm not actually at the show, but fuck it. I tried to upgrade to a king suite to bring a bunch of shit. Last year I went to the Capitol Audio Fest and I brought a bunch of shit. This year I'm going and I'm bringing different shit. I got the Orchard Audio Stark Grimson's. I'm bringing the Swan M300 Mark II's because last year I was like, I wish I could show these to people and show them how great they are. So I'm doing it this year. But um, I got a stacks of things and I'm like, you know what, I want to try something interesting and new that I haven't reviewed yet. So I went onto the pile and I found the Cottis Tone Board. Well, the Tone 2 but not the Tone 2 Pro. This is the Tone 2 Pro. The difference between this and this is this has headphone outs and that doesn't. The end. They've made a few adjustments, I believe, from this to that, but really, like, uh, this is just a DAC. It's just a DAC and it's $200 in the case. If you get it like the raw board, it's $154 or something. It's like $35 less, but then you don't get the case. And then if you look right here, this little guy, this little guy with the, with the blue back here, that's the Cottis Magic, BT Magic Bluetooth module. That's 45 additional dollars. So what we have here, I didn't even count the wires, oh my God. What we have here is a $245 DAC now with Bluetooth. And I can just look at this. It's literally the exact same build as this, only instead of there being two holes here, they ain't shit there. So when I reviewed this back in the day, I had some high praise for it and some complaints. And I tried to use it. I literally would pull it out and I'd be like, I'm gonna use it for this, or I'm gonna use it for that. And then it just became annoying. I really don't wanna rehash everything I said in this review, but I'm, I'm propaganda. Um, Cottis makes basically adapter boards for uh, Raspberry Pis. So they stick them on top of Raspberry Pis and you get your audio outputs. And they got famous for their original tone board because it was so clean. And they sort of like sidestepped and made their own like complete unit. You don't need to do anything with a Pi, you just plug it in USB. And this has, this one, the original one, has remarkable properties and some of the worst interfacing that's ever been on a device in human fucking history. Human history. That, that's a long time. That was the ancient Chinese and the, the Egyptians, and the, fuck the, the worst. Um, and I'm sad to say they haven't improved it in the new one. So what they did is take something that I actually gave a pretty good recommendation for, removed one of the nicest features. The fact that this had headphone balanced output and 3.5 millimeter output and sounded decent and was kind of this quirky thing. I, I gave it like a full on pass because it sounded great. So they took away the headphone amplifier and what are we left with? Well, what we're left with is a $200 DAC that has coaxial in, USB in, and somehow I2S in through a th USB-C, which to this moment, the company who sent me this hasn't given me an adapter or told me where I could find an adapter to actually use a full-size HDMI I2S input into this because that's like the higher end. That, so it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Let me tighten my wristband. Hold on. I, I made an elastic band for my watch. Look, I sewed it and everything. Um, for those of you who've never seen this before, it's rather interesting. You plug it in with a so signal either through coaxial or through USB, and you get a little volume knob here, which is really smooth. And this doesn't just spin, it also clicks down. Very nice. Um, then you have RCA outputs. But wait, those aren't RCA outputs. In an attempt to be just game changers, but it's no one's doing this because there's no reason to, um, those are also balanced outputs through RCA. Uh, 
let it sink in for a second. So for some reason, CADIS, I understand this is too small a unit to put like a full size XLR plug on it. XLR are big, XLR are big things and you can't fit it on that. But they have gone and engineered, here I have one, oh please don't make a loud sound. Oh, a little baby sound. They've engineered a special RCA head that has a connection, connection there, ground here, and then another pin in the back to make it three. And once it's three, it's balanced. So you can plug a regular RCA in here or get and get RCA out, or you plug this special motherfucking cable. I didn't mean to do that. And then you have balanced out. And these cables actually, let's take a walk are going to the Stark Rimson amps here and here. And it's just, you see, it's a regular full size XLR connector. So the Mica RB42s are being powered by the upgraded, the now upgraded Stark Rimsons. I will link to those again because I sent those back to the guy and he upped the gain, not the wattage, but the input gain is more sensitive now. So I can squeeze a little bit more power out of them. And oh God, I can. Um, so my problem with this whole setup is it doesn't need to exist because you can just use a 4.4 Pentacon as a balanced output. Look at the IFI Zendak. Look at the Wu Audio stuff. You just you need an input or an output. You can, can literally have one plug this big that does two channels in balance. So why are we engineering new connectors that no one asked for? Like it's kind of cool, but now this $200 DAC, if you want to use it in true balanced, you have to buy the cables. And if, I, if memory serves and I didn't look it up, I think these cables, this pair of cables and this line was like 70 something dollars just to get it to a normal size XLR because you literally can't use anything. Now you can go out and find 4.4 .4 to like XLRs, probably for like the 20, $25 range to buy them because I've bought them before. Maybe they're like $40 for a nice one. But now these you not only get, they're not on anything else in the whole fucking world. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna balance this review with bads and goods. The bads is, well the goods is it's small and it's very pretty like very pretty, like there's actual like design through this. And it's like, this is gonna be in a, in a magazine. It looks like something you'd be like, oh man, I really want that from the future. The bad being that that's dumb as fuck, that that comes out like that's, that's just stupid. Um, the good is it sounds phenomenal. It has got the, the thing that made the tone good, the original tone board was it sounded good. The thing that made this, great was that I could use the balance output. They sent me the wires because I wasn't going to buy them. Um, I did it RCA outs as well. I could use coax, I could use USB. This second USB on both of them, this one's currently got the Bluetooth adapter. If it didn't have the Bluetooth adapter, you could send in a linear power supply and it would just take signal from that USB and then you'd have a linear power into the other one so you could have a little bit cleaner. It's, it's a nice touch. Those are good things. It sounds great. I currently have it hooked up to a fucking $1,700 monoblocks. This is coming to Capital Audio Fest. In this forum, it's gonna have the job. Let me unpause. There, I'll change. God, those speakers. It's gonna have the job of literally delivering signal to amplifiers that I consider pre pretty much the best amplifiers I've ever heard. Going to some of the most amazing speakers, the RB42s, I swear to Christ, you gotta hear them on like 150 watts of pure power. They're the best speakers. This little, little, it's to show off. That's the whole point of me going to one of these shows and setting up a room, even if I'm not part of the room. It's to show off what can be done with such little money and size. It's like this little thing, this little thing is doing this sort of sound, yes with those little things. It's just little tiny things. Okay, do you want to get to the next part? Was I want to, I don't want to, mm, I, mm, that's good. I just praise the fuck out of this. This thing is what I'm bringing. I could hook these amps up to the FIO K9 Pro. I could hook them up to the back of the IFI Neo IDSD because they both have full-size XLR outs. So it'll just be click, click, 
done, and then I could adjust them. Although I will say the K9 is off the menu for that because of the way the K9 works with the switch, where the switch is headphone, preamp, or full fucking line out with like a little tiny little, little fuck. Oh, I fucked it, I fuck it? You do fuck it, you instantly fuck it. So I wouldn't do that for these, no. This one, however, would work, except for the fact that it also outputs in the back and in the front at the same time. There's no switch because there's no options. Everything here has a flaw. I'm okay with flawed units. I'm okay. I love things with flaws. I'm flawed. We're all flawed as people, and that's just, you have to get used to that. And sometimes the flaws are the most beautiful thing. But let me tell you about the, the big flaw of the Cotis Tone. Of course, it's fucking massive. It's the fact that this nice knob, which is really nice to spin, has LEDs underneath it. And I'm not upset that there's RGB LEDs underneath it. I'm back, I'm taking my fucking camera off my head. Hold on. Right, you see this? Do you see this? Is this ring around it that goes, because here's, here's, here's the main problem. That ring doesn't need to be under there because I can't really see it. That ring should be here. Um, the problem with the ring there is that this ring, <laughs> in the book, if we look in the book, we have to decipher what the ring is doing. With, with the book, and that's with the volume control. Okay, that's fine, but then you have to like assess, not just like in one little section where you could see it, like the whole fucking, like, what is that? 100 and 200 degrees of ring? You have to assess where there is a yellow dot moving to pick the inputs or the filters. Or, I mean, this is just to sort of like tell what your music is doing. Is it 704, is it five, three? These I don't care about. It's when I'm in this motherfucker, trying to set something up and I have to like know how to, and then, oh, then there's this, which is how you do it. Hold on, I'm putting this back on my head so I could get angry with it with two hands. I need to, two hands. So since we're Bluetooth connected to that, I now have the ability to change the volume, change the track, change the input and change the filter. Those are basically the four things you could do. To switch what does that, you have to double press the knob down. Not down, down towards you. And you have to cycle through it and you have to memorize what the colors are or use this thing a lot. So if, let's see if I wanted to change tracks. I have to double press, the fucking teal goes to red and then I rotate and then this should rotate again. There it goes, it changed tracks. And it changed tracks again. <sighs> sounds so good change tracks again and I could just keep spinning it look I'm just spinning this I'm just spinning this and it's just track after track after track after track now I'm gonna pause it for a second because if we leave it alone it might eventually go back to volume maybe I don't know I don't have the patience so we want to get it back to volume and you would think that after you've done your track change maybe you press it once and it goes back nope don't do shit that unpauses it still it always pauses and unpauses. If we want to get from, we went from volume to track, we want to change again, we double click again. Now that yellow fucking dot shows up down there. I don't know if a camera can even see it. So now we're in the input section where we can choose USB SPDIF I2S, GPIO for I2S or auto. And I have it set to Bluetooth, which is what I'm testing with. So now if I want to switch it down one, now we're spit if not all the way down to USB. So now I have to assess the fucking color in the goddamn inside of a fucking ring that's like you can't see it. Like, is this a key? You can't see it unless you climb inside of it like fucking Ant Man. Here, right? I'm gonna change the input. Oh, it's moving up. And now it's literally behind the other side of the unit. So just, 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 uh, uh, uh. uh. And now I wanna get out of this. So you're gonna press, press. And now we're in the other one, which is um, the filter select, which I don't give a flying fuck about. Now we're double press again. And now we're on the teal, and now it's showing volume. So I can scroll over down and do it red, muted. Oh, fuck. Okay, this could be fixed. Cottis, I love you guys. You make great stuff. The Cottis T, you know the Cottis little Cottis T that sticks to the back of your phone? That thing's great. And I loved this thing, but I had complaints about this, and this is not fixing those. Um, step one, either make this clear so I can see the fucking lights, or move the lights somewhere else, or, and I know this is possible, and I'm, I asked for it the last time I did a review, I'm gonna ask for it this time, 
Take this big empty space that has nothing to do with anything, make it a touch surface. Make this double tap to pause, double tap to play, next track, next track, keep your volume here, keep your volume here, and then just next track, next track, last track. And didn't put an indicator that's not under the fucking ring. It's so nice. The design is so pretty and they didn't need to make it this complicated, but they did for looks and the, it's not, it's not just printed on there. That's in a, engraved in there and painted. It's so nice. It's so fucking nice. And then working with it makes me want to rip my fucking hair out. That being said, I'm still bringing in a capital audio fest because I'm going to use it coaxial digital, which means this will now play. Hold on. Got some Akira going on. None of the pause or anything will work anymore because that was all for the phone. I think that's going to get me... I think that's enough to get me kicked off of YouTube. Just like the three bangs. I don't know if they could calculate three bangs. Uh, it should honestly have Bluetooth built in at this point. If we're going from... because It should have been the other way around. It should have come out this one first and then they added headphone outs. And they were like, no, 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 we'll do it all the way, then we'll back it out. And then we'll also add a Bluetooth thing. And I guess the Bluetooth thing would also work here and I can move it here, but it's 45 fucking dollars. And it will only basically work on a Cottis product because it's, it's literally a USB-C that just goes and plugs in. So are you gonna buy that? My, here's, oh, you have to memorize the colors here. White is LDAC, which is what it was on. I want to recommend this because it sounds great. It sounds, all, I, all the praise I can give this is it sounds equivalent or better than anything you can get for $200 to $250 on a DAC, in a standalone DAC. It just sounds as good or better, like warmer, creamy. When I plug it into a straight amp, like, like the fucking LA90, and I'm just like, I crank that shit up, and I'm, using, I'm like, wow, I couldn't tell you that this was coming from a thing this size of six credit cards stacked high. I couldn't tell you. That's how good this sounds. But does that matter if you're not willing to actually deal with the fucking, the, to deal with it, to deal with it, to deal with it? If I had to actively go through those menus more than like once ever in this unit's fucking life, like I switched it finally to, to, to Spitif, so I could take this book and never look at it again and never change that, ever, ever, never, ever change it. Hit the Bluetooth module out, sell it, sell it. And just, just, I like the fact that it runs Bluetooth. It's nice and you could do the next track, last track, But it's so annoying. I love how it sounds, but it's so annoying. This is like the worst user interface in an old fucking 90s RPG or something. It's just, it's just, no, 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 you gotta double click the icon and then triple click the icon to get to the settings and then quadruple click the icon while holding control to get to the other secret menu where you can adjust the resolution. It's like, I don't want, th there are better options. They're already limiting themselves to the size of this unit. Why the f Fuck, wouldn't you take advantage of other technologies or a button? Just another button. Just another button. Any, any, I don't even have to be the, the cool touch screen that I've talked about. Just next track, last track, play, pause. Three buttons on top. And then I wouldn't have to dig through menus. And you, but they want to do so much with this. Like, look, look, I got the JDS Labs Element 3s coming with me. And it's got a screen. And you could hit the button on the screen and change things. And you can go SPDIF or USB, and, and then you could, you could go into the menu and do, I forget how you do things. Is it hold down? That doesn't turn it off. There you go, look. Look how tiny that screen is. And it's got, it's got like nine levels, a hundred fucking little options. Do it here. Put that here. Don't do the fucking decoder ring Johnny Bravo 7 from the 1960s over like all oh, the folk because it's physically impossible to with your eyes witness what that's doing it's under the fucking knob and even if you do you can't see the whole knob from just like the side you got to be behind the goddamn unit anyway I love the way this thing sounds and I'm taking it to Capital Audio Fest and I hope you people understand that I need to hate on this, but at the same time, it sounds so fucking good. I don't even think, this is not even on Amazon anymore. This comes up currently unavailable. But this thing was amazing, and the headphone out, although slightly underpowered, was 
clear as crystal. Anyone in the comments, please, if you have one of these, if you followed my advice or just bought it on a whim, have you used this? Have you used it for like sensitive IEMs? How good is this fucking thing? Tell the people. This thing doesn't have that option and it's still got all this weird fucking not real. I mean, the fact that like, one of the greatest things this company's ever done, and I don't know why everyone doesn't adopt this, every other company on earth. If you look down at the RCAs, which you know are here, you can see the colors. There's holes cut through the top, so I can see the red, the white, and the, and the yellow, and the orange plastic to see that that's right, left, and coaxial. There's literally holes on the top and bottom so that I don't have to go all the way behind to see it. Please, everyone, do that. Please, everyone, do that. The fact that it feels so well built and accurate and this, this knob is just, oh, it's so smooth. And yet I'm losing my fucking shit trying to just get, get I want to get out of the change track thing because it's just, just scrolly, scrolly, scroll. Thank you for stopping by this channel. Don't forget to check out In-Ear Fetish, the channel where I just talk about uh, in-ear monitors. And that's the thing. And um, the second channel and Patreon and subscribe, sir. Supports this channel. Uh, I'm not being sponsored to go to Capital Audio Fest. I'm going on my own dime. I'm bringing all this stuff just because I love going there. Um, and because I want to be able to shove $900 speakers in the face of everyone who's looking at like $10,000 speakers and be like, nah, your shit sucks. Look at this. So I should get sw sponsored by Swan to bring their shit there. I'll get a whole room. I will fuck everybody up one day. I'll just do it out of spite. Um, but people on Patreon and Subscribestar support that habit of mine. And you get to see reviews early, participate in yard sales. And I've made the decision. All sound demos will now be available only to patrons in a special tier. Well, it'll be another $5 tier, which I think any $5 patron will be able to get to it. But I'll be able to put not safe work backgrounds and use any fucking songs I want. Because with Jeffrey not broadcasting that anywhere, it's not actually happening. Shh, lawyers. Um, so if, you ever want, if you're actually interested in sound demos, they're probably never coming back to YouTube. I, I can't risk it. It's, it's like waving my dick around at a school bus. It's like you're going to get arrested at some point. So it's the same risk factor for fucking YouTube sound demos. Um, so yeah, check out $5 a month, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, access to sound demos. Um, $10 a month, a private behind the scenes Telegram chat where those people know exactly what I'm doing every day, all day. They know about this thing. You don't know about this thing. You don't know about this thing. I know about this thing. You don't know about this thing. But they do. Um, and yeah, $10 will get you into that. Ask me questions directly. Uh, you get into a lifetime swap meet chat once you join there. So you can buy, sell, and trade gear. If I steered you wrong, sell the gear. If you really want something and it's not available anymore, go and say, I want to buy this. Someone probably has it and is willing to part with it for money. Um, Hi-Fi Guides in the Hi-Fi Guides forum. And I, that wallpaper is in the hoard. The wallpaper hoard is going in the, in the thing. It's, it's great, but she's filled with fucking acid. She's still the best girl in that show. She's still best girl in that show. She's gotta melt your dick. I gotta go now. I gotta fucking go now. Thank you, Codis, by the way, for sending this out. Please heed some, and just the touch screen. In, I'm waiting for any unit to just switch to a touch screen like on the fascia, just like every Sony headphone has. But you know, like, just, it'd be so cool, it'd be so fucking cool.